Let's be real. Sometimes life is chaotic. Sometimes life is uncontrollable. Sometimes life is downright unfair. Where is God in the midst of that? What's up guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. So the other day we were at Westtown Mall in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, my wife, my daughter and I, and we got kind of hungry so we went to the food court and we ended up going to three different places. I went to Chipotle, my wife went to Subway, and we took my daughter to Chick-fil-A. She got her some Christian chicken, right? Uh, Cause they had a Happy Meal that we thought she would like. And she did, she loved the chicken nuggets, she loved the french fries, uh, she loved the drink. Um, she did, she loved, she ate the whole meal, and I promise I'm not sponsored by Chick-fil-A, unfortunately. But she ate the whole thing, but Chick-fil-A, man, they got something going for them. Not only are they Christian chicken, but they actually still give real toys. Like, she had a little toy that was battery operated, and it was sort of like a little flashlight. And I, and I wish I had it, but I couldn't find it. She must did something with it. But it was this little toy that if you press the button, it would light up, but if you pointed it at something, you would see that it was a constellation of stars. So it would actually kind of project that onto it. Man, Chick-fil-A is stepping it up with their toys. No one is doing that anymore. I thought it was funny, my daughter, who is about 18 months old, she had this little thing in her hand and she would, she would point it and she'd press the button and she would just stare at it. And she would just look at the light on the end of it and she would just stare at it, but she'd never point it at something and I'd take it and I'd try to point it at something, but she'd always just focus on, on it itself. She, she would never look at actually what it was projecting onto. She'd never look at actually what, what else was there. She would only focus on the item itself. And it kind of got me thinking, how often in life, when we're going through something and when we're facing something or we're going through, you know, a hard time, when we're going through a hardship, when we're going through, uh, you know, a struggle, a pain, whatever that may look like for us, how often when we're going through that, do we only focus on the thing? How many times do we only focus on the light? and not actually look at the bigger picture. That we don't actually look at what God's doing with that. For example, have you ever watched one of those videos on Facebook? I didn't, I, I wanted to put one up here, but I didn't exactly have permission from anyone, so I didn't. But have you ever seen those videos that seem to come up on Facebook of uh, like a spray paint artist and they're just going to town on, on whatever this is and you're in the beginning and you're like, what are you painting? Like, and you have random spray marks over here and he's taking a knife and like scraped away this part and you're looking at it and you see him make a mark and you're like, oh no, he made a mistake. In this work of art and whatever he's putting all his time into, he's clearly made a mistake. That mark right there makes no sense. There's no purpose for it. Sometimes I bet these areas of our life that we would consider pains, that we would consider struggles, that we would consider hurts, we're saying those are insignificant, unnecessary marks in our life. Those are not part of our picture. But you know, the painter who makes that mark that we think is unnecessary, when he, he makes that spray that we think is a mistake, he's actually planning that is gonna be the eye. That is gonna be the center point of the whole painting. That mark or that insignificant spray or that mistake is gonna be an integral part of that painting and the painter can see it because he sees the picture as a whole. And I'm saying for you and me, those things that we go through, those pains that we face, those struggles we go through that seem unnecessary, that seem chaotic, that seem unfair, well, we have a great God who has already planned out this painting that we call life, that he's already planned it out in a detailed fashion and that thing that we call unnecessary or unfair is gonna play an integral role that we are going through this so that we can go through that. It's gonna make us that much stronger. We're going through this because we're gonna have a friend who's gonna be struggling and we're gonna be able to help them or we're going through this because God is gonna work it out for our good. And that's not just limited to us. We see that throughout the Bible. Joseph, God promised, was going to be an amazing man. He was going to do great things for God. And he had dreams telling him how great he was going to be. So he told his brothers about how great he was going to be and, and the promises that God had given to him. And his brothers became jealous of what Joseph was saying. And they became mad and angry because of what Joseph was saying. Because Joseph had a promise from God. And they actually debated on killing Joseph. And they decided not to. And they sold him into slavery. Now, Joseph goes and he is a slave for years and he serves under a great leader and he actually becomes like the second in command in his spot as a slave. 
And the guy's wife comes on to him and, and Joseph flees knowing it is wrong and he can't do that. He can't, you know, sleep with this guy's wife. And the wife being embarrassed actually accuses Joseph of trying to rape her. And Joseph, doing nothing wrong, still yet a promise from God, sold into slavery, works hard, becomes a great slave, turns down the man's wife, does a good thing by that, and still he gets accused of rape and gets sent to prison. Now Joseph, while in prison, he's just serving his sentence. He's being a good person. He is once again being a good prisoner in a situation he didn't deserve. Two servants of the Pharaoh get sent to prison and get basically roomed up with Joseph and they have dreams and Joseph interprets their dreams. That's a gift God has given him. He interprets their dreams and they get out. Joseph remains in prison and a few years later, something interesting happens. A few years later, Pharaoh has a dream that no one in all the kingdom can interpret. But hey, the cupbearer, the servant that was in prison with Joseph remembers, hey, there was this dude in prison. He told me what my dream meant. You should check him out. So Pharaoh does. Pharaoh gets him out of prison. Joseph interprets his dream. Pharaoh is so joyful that he gets made second in command of the entire nation of Egypt. And as second in command, Joseph knows that there's going to be a crazy drought come up. So as second in command, he stores up all this food for Egypt and he, he basically constructs all this plan that Egypt would survive when the drought came. And when the drought does come, all the countries surrounding them and all the countries in the distance, they are without food and without crops. So they have to come to Egypt to get food and crops. Of all these people that have to come to Egypt, guess who else is still without food? Joseph's father Jacob and all his brothers that sold him to slavery. His brothers end up having to come to Egypt and basically beg for food to Joseph, the brother they sold to slavery. Oh, in that moment, Joseph could have had him beheaded. Man, he could have did whatever he wanted in that moment. He was the man in charge. But Joseph loved them and Joseph gave to them. He gave them food, he gave them safety, he gave them security, he had them bring his father and they were again together as a family. And at one point we have Joseph quoted saying these words to his brothers, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Did you get that? That Joseph faced some blemishes, that Joseph faced some struggles, that Joseph had some marks in his painting, that he went through some unfair things. He was enslaved, imprisoned, and for nothing for a calling of God. He never did anything wrong, and he got all of those things put on him. If anyone could say life is unfair, it was this man. Yet this man says, what you intended for harm, God intended for good. So no, that thing that seems unfair, that blemish in your life, that fight that you're fighting, that pain you're going through, God wants to do something with it. One of my favorite verses in all the Bible is Romans 8.28. And it says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Notice that. God causes everything, not just the good things, but everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, the pain, the blemish, the unfair things, all of those things he causes to work together for the good of those who love him. Whatever you're facing today, whatever you're going through, whatever trials or pains or blemishes or unfairness, whatever you're going through, know today that God can work it together for good and that to you, from your perspective, you only see a mark that doesn't belong in this painting. But God can see the painting as a whole. He sees the past, the present, the future. He is omnipresent. He is omnipotent. He knows all. He sees all. He plans all. Have faith today because the God of all creation, the God of Joseph, the Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides, He is watching out for you and He is working whatever you're going through today. He's working it out for your good. That's the God we serve, guys. Have hope. All right, guys, thanks for making it this far. If you enjoyed today's video, I release content just like this every single week, so go ahead and slap that subscribe button. Leave me a comment down below letting me know how God is working in your life. All right, guys, love you. Keep living that bold life.